Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 10, Lesson 1 on Types of Solids. Most geometry that you've studied so far, and honestly most geometry that you will study in the future, including high school geometry, concentrates on what we call two-dimensional geometry. Geometry that just happens in a flat plane that extends forever in all directions. But we live in a three-dimensional world. So in this particular unit in Math 6, which is rather short, it's only four lessons long, we're going to concentrate on objects that live in a three-dimensional world as we do. All right, so let's jump right into it right away. All right, now there's a lot of different types of solids, which are just three-dimensional objects. And I do want to point out the fact that, you know, in, in science, of course, you study solids, liquids, and gases, right? When we talk about a solid in this case, we're, we're not talking about that kind of solid. A solid is just anything that, like, exists in a three-dimensional world. That's it. It's just like anything that exists in a three-dimensional world whose volume and things like surface area you can measure, that's what we call a solid. Now, there are many different types of solids. I mean tons of them. It's like classifying plants, right? But there are some that are rather major, and we're going to be looking at two of them today, the prism and the pyramid, all right? So let's talk about what is a prism, all right? A prism is any solid with two identical faces, and a face is what we call the thing that encloses a solid. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But two identical faces and whose other faces are all parallelograms, okay? So you get these two identical faces that we call bases of the solid. They run parallel to each other, okay? They're sort of flat compared to each other. And then we have these sides that kind of wrap around the prism, all right? And they all have to be parallelograms. And remember, parallelograms can be rectangles, squares, just normal parallelograms, but they're always four-sided figures, right, with two pairs of parallel sides. All right, simple enough. So let's jump right into exercise one, and let's analyze a prism. The following figure shows a prism. Answer the following questions based on this image. Letter A. A face is a polygon that encloses the solid. We don't use the word side because it could be confused with the side of a polygon. How many faces does this solid have? All right, so this isn't too bad. Remember, you know, when we talk about two-dimensional figures, um, so let's say that we had this kind of hexagon. This is a nice six-sided figure, right? Then we talked about these straight line segments as being the, the sides of the hexagon. On the other hand, something like this now serves as one of the faces of a solid. So we don't talk about the sides of a solid, we talk about its faces. And those are literally the flat surfaces that enclose the solid. So how many of these things does this particular ha figure have? Well, pause the video now and see if you can count them up. All right, well, I've got my base up here and I've got my base down here. That's two of them. Now my, my faces that go around the figure one, two, three, four, five of them. So I've got the five that go around the figure and then the two bases, one, two. So I have a total of seven faces. Simple enough as long as you know what a face is. Now let's take a look at letter B. Every prism has two identical faces known as its bases. What kind of polygon are the two bases and why? All right, so right, this is one of the bases, this is the other base down here. What kind of polygon is that? See if you can remember. Pause the video now and write something down. Well, each one of those bases has one, two, three, four, five sides, so this is a pentagon, right? The bases are pentagons and Y because they have five sides. All right, easy enough, they have five sides. Let's take a look at letter C. All the other faces of a prism, besides the bases, are known as the lateral faces and must be parallelograms. How many lateral faces does this prism have? All right, well, let me move the picture back up so that we can actually see it. See if you can count how many lateral faces this figure has. 
All right, well, it's simple enough, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? It's got five lateral faces. Now, just as a side note, right? Of course, the reason that it has five lateral faces is because the top and the bottom, the bases, right, are pentagons that have five sides each. So literally, all we're really doing is connecting all the vertex points of this base with the vertex points of the other base, and then that leaves us with the five sides, each, each oh, sorry, those five lateral faces. Each one of those lateral faces corresponds to one of the sides of the pentagon. And that's really key in letter D. Let's take a look at that for a moment. If another prism has bases that were octagons, how many total faces would the prism have? Explain your thinking. All right, I want you to pause the video now and think about the fact that if these shapes, these two pentagons weren't pentagons, but they were octagons, how many total faces would the, the prism have? Well, every prism has two bases. All right, so let's just kind of count them, right? Everyone has two bases. Now, an octagon is an eight-sided figure, right? An octagon has eight sides. Literally, if we looked at the base, not the prettiest octagon, but it'll get the job done. If we looked at the bases, they would look like this, right? Which would mean that there would be eight lateral sides, right? Eight or eight lateral faces that would enclose this thing as you went around. One for every one of the sides of the bases. So the lateral would be eight, and there would be a total of 10 faces. Right? An octagon on the top, an octagon on the bottom, and then eight faces, eight parallelogram faces that go around that connect that top to the bottom. Kind of easy. Let's keep going. Let's work with some more prisms. Let's take a look at exercise number two. A prism is shown below. What type of shape is its base? All right, that's easy enough. So what kind of shape is the base of this prism? Pause the video now. All right, it should be simple enough, right? It's a triangle, okay? And again, it's a triangle because, not so much because it's sitting like this, even if it was turned kind of in some different orientation, it would still be a triangle as its base. But it's because, right, I mean, you know, these two are parallel and then all the other sides are parallelograms. So it's simple enough. It's a triangle. All right, letter B asks us, how many faces does this prism have? Again, simple enough, if you know what a face is, pause the video and count up the number of faces. Well, what we see is, again, two, right, two bases that are identical to each other, and then one, two, three lateral faces, corresponding to the three sides of the triangular bases, and therefore we have a total of five faces. All right, finally, letter C. This prism is known as a right prism. What type of lateral faces, the non-bases, does it have? All right, so the lateral faces of any prism are always parallelograms. But because this is a right prism, there's something even nicer about the faces, the lateral faces of this particular um, prism. What do you think is special about them? What type of figures do you think they are? Pause the video now. All right, well, they're all rectangles. All right, right basically implies right angles. In other words, right, all of these are right angles, which means the lateral faces are rectangles. Most most prisms that we deal with, especially in this course, but really most prisms that you deal with in general will be right prisms, meaning that not only are they wrapped by parallelograms,
but those parallelograms also happen to be rectangles. All right, let's keep going. So, probably the most famous type of prism, the one that you will see on a daily basis, right, is what's called the right rectangular prism, also known as a box. Let's take a look at exercise number three. Perhaps the most common prism of all is the right rectangular prism, aka a box. Letter A, how many faces does a right rectangular prism have? And letter B, what type of polygons are all faces of this prism, both base and lateral? All right, I'd like you to pause the video and answer both of these questions. And this first one is really quite important. So pause the video now. All right, well, because we're gonna be working with right rectangular prisms a lot, i.e. boxes, right? It's really important to know right away that they have six faces, right? So they have one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can take it kind of how we did before. You know, you got the bases that are top and bottom and they're rectangles, and then you've got all the, the figures that go around it, all four of them. So we have a total of six faces, and that's extremely important. All right rectangular prisms have six faces. Now letter B, what type of polygons are all faces of this prism, both base and lateral? Well, they happen to be rectangles. Now, the fact that it's a right prism, the fact that it's a right prism automatically meant that the lateral faces were rectangles. But the fact that it's actual, it's actually a rectangular prism, right, rectangular kind of refers to the bases. And the two bases are identical rectangles, but then it's also wrapped by rectangles, okay? Finally, maybe the most important right rectangular prism at all is what we're gonna take a look at and see. A special type of right rectangular prism is one where all the faces are squares. What type of special shape is this? All right, so in other words, a square is a rectangle. I hope you all know that, but if you didn't, let me be very clear. A square is just a special type of a rectangle where all of its sides are the same length, but then it's got all those right angles in it. So what do we call a solid, a right rectangular prism, where every single one of the faces is an identical square? What are those called? Pause the video now. Well, this is the cube, right? So maybe the most basic of all prisms, the cube, okay? It's got identical square bases and then four identical square lateral faces and identical to the, to the actual two bases as well. And you know that. If you pick up a die or anything else that's in the shape of a cube, right, all the sides are the same two-dimensional square shape. All right, now let's take a look at the other type of solid we're gonna look at today, the pyramid. So another type of solid that's important is the pyramid. It's very similar to the prism, except its lateral faces are triangles instead of parallelograms. So what is a prism? You know, or, sorry, what is a pyramid? <laughs> A pyramid is any solid with a single base now, and that single base could be any shape. It could be a rectangle, a triangle, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, an octagon, it doesn't matter, right? A single base now could be any type of polygon, and all the lateral faces are triangles that meet at a common point known as the vertex, right? And you've seen plenty of pictures of pyramids, both in the real world, right? Pyramids in Egypt and places like that, and also just kind of in math textbooks or other pictures like that. Now let's take a look at the pyramid that we have in exercise number four. For the pyramid shown to the right, answer the following question, letter A. What type of figure appears to serve at its, as its base? And B, how many triangular lateral faces does it have? All right, this should be pretty easy. Why don't you answer both A and B? Pause the video now. Well, it's tricky. One thing that we can say for certain is that that base looks like it's a parallelogram. It could also be a rectangle, but without doubt, it is definitely a parallelogram, okay? No question about that. Now, is it a further parallelogram, i.e. Is it, is it more special than that? Is it also a rectangle? That we don't know because it's not been indicated in the problem. 
Letter B is pretty easy. How many triangular lateral faces do we have? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, right? And of course, we have four triangular lateral faces because for each side of this parallelogram, we have a triangle coming off of it, right? Because those sides of the parallelogram are serving as the bases of the triangles that are all meeting up here at that vertex point. Okay? Let's take a look at one more pyramid. All right, this is one of the coolest pyramids out there, exercise number five. A pyramid can be made solely out of identical triangles. This shape is known as a tetrahedron. What type of triangle do you think each of its identical faces is? All right, so this, this is rather cool. You can have, kind of like the cube, all right, this is the equivalent of the cube for a pyramid. It's known as a tetrahedron. And all of the triangular faces are completely and utterly identical. So with that being the case, what kind of triangles do you think these are? Pause the video now. Well, the technical term for them is equilateral. Equilateral triangles. Now, if you've never heard the term equilateral triangles, then you may have just said all sides are the same length. So probably the most basic of all triangles, kind of like the most basic of all rectangles, the most basic of all triangles is what's known as an equilateral triangle, where all three sides, not that I've drawn this one very well, but all three sides are the same length. And that's the only way you can then get a pyramid where all of the sides are identical triangles, is if all the sides have identical lengths, right? If all the faces are these identical equilateral triangles, the only way that's going to happen is if each one of the triangles has side lengths that are all the same length, equilateral triangles. All right, let's wrap this up. So mostly today, what we wanted to do was introduce you to some terminology. Specifically, what is a prism? What is a pyramid? What is a face? What is a base? What is a lateral face? Etc. How do we count the faces? And whatnot. In future lessons, we're going to move into things like volume and surface area of solids. Literally things that we can measure about solids. And we want to have a firm grasp on these two types of solids before we move on. All right, but we're going to see them a lot in the coming three lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.